Yeah, thanks, Sue. Um, yeah, fostering innovation and changing culture. I mean, the first question, I suppose, that one has to ask is, why are these two uh, crashed together? Why is it that we're talking about innovation and changing culture in the same, uh, in the same presentation? Um, the reason, very simply, is that whilst innovation depends on lots of things, and we'll see what it depends on very shortly, it also depends very much on the organization having a particularly, shall we say, positive or innovation, in, innovative um, culture. And sometimes people will call it a, uh, an innovation climate um, that has to exist in order to promote innovation. So. Therefore, one has to have the right culture in order to have innovation. Therefore, that's why the pair of them are together. Uh, what we're going to cover today is what innovation is. Inevitably, if you can't define it, then it's difficult to talk about it. So what innovation is, therefore, how to foster innovation. And in the middle of that, of course, there's going to be a discussion about culture. We'll have to look at what culture is. And therefore, we'll have to look at how you actually build culture and therefore how you would go about changing culture. Uh, just as a reminder, you've got a workbook. Uh, we've sent everybody a workbook. And in that workbook, there is uh, a list of further reading, which are some papers, some uh, blogs and the likes on uh, innovation and on culture. And and also just the inevitable reminder, we are, we are consultants, we're management consultants. The whole reason for doing this is that we hope that you'll say, aha, these guys seem to know something about this subject. And if you're going forward with any projects, then perhaps you might think about us. So anyway, without more ado, why is it that we're bothered about talking about this? And if I could get the slides to work, we might be OK. Yeah, that's a good one. It's called a frozen PC. There we go. Right. Um, yeah, why, why are we bothered? But the simple answer is that all companies seek competitive advantage. Competitive advantage allows companies to sell more than their competition because they can differentiate their products from the competition's products. Therefore, their products are more, de more desirable. And for products, I also mean uh, services. Competitive advantage allows the company also to make more profit because the uh, costs are lower in your company, uh, and therefore you can make uh, some more profit. Just excuse me a moment. All right, quick cough switch um, <laughs> offline. So um, the, the, the simple answer is that competitive advantage, the drive for competitive advantage in business demands that we achieve more than the competition and we do that through a process of innovation we are shall we say more of innovative than our competitors so we should ask the question well that's fine but what is innovation the simple answer i suppose is something to do with incremental change now let's just have a quick look and see all the words because there's loads of words around innovation and and it would be you you'd be forgiven for getting very confused about the word innovation you know we are talking things like invention and we won't go through the differences between invention and innovation or between developments and innovation or between design and innovation etc but there are lots and lots of words innovation is quite a special word because innovation can be done at any scale and we don't uh, development for example involves plans whereas innovation, in fact, can, can realize without any plan whatsoever. So innovation is quite a special affair. Innovation, then, if I look at, at what it is, and I hate slides that are so busy, but it, I think it's just so important to actually pause a moment and just look at what, if we look, if we like, the definition is. This is a definition that comes from an innovation award that I'm judge on, uh, on, the, on the panel of judges for. And I'll take you through this because I think it really, if you get this, then you get everything to do with innovation because this actually tells you how to do it as well. The yellow bits are the bits that you're interested in. And innovation is new or evolved. So it can be something that is new, but it also can be something that takes something that already exists and evolves it a little. 
innovation's often thought of, oh, it has to be a product. No, it does not. It absolutely does not. And here I've defined it as method, process, idea, product, service, algorithm, or concept. It's, it's, it's many, many things. It's, it's, it goes right across the whole of the organization. So it could be innovating a process, changing, evolving a process. It could be uh, taking a product, by all means. It could be a service. It could be some piece of software that contains an algorithm, etc. Now, the important thing is that it's, it's realized through a discernible process. This does not happen by accident. This is not something that just pops out. And also, I've highlighted there by a group. This is not something that is done by an individual in the bottom of the garden in a shed that suddenly pops out and says, hey, I've got this. That is not an innovation. Um, you might call it an invention. It might be creative, but it's not innovative. Um, it has to have value, clearly, because otherwise, why would we do it? It would have to have benefit. And most of all, it must address a need. That is so important that it must address a need. That gives it the drive. That gives it gives us the reason for why we would want to innovate. I'll come back to this, but there's the got to be some evident step between the new state, something new, and something old. Otherwise, how would we know if we did it? And there's a little bit of a definition down the bottom there about what innovation involves. It's the deliberate application of information, imagination, and initiative. So we're talking about deliberately doing things. Um, we're using resources in a different way, um, which again, I think is, is quite important to generate. And it, it comes, ultimately, we generate useful so solutions. And we, it's about ideas. It's a lot about generating ideas. So one of the most important things is if somebody says to you, um, or oh, he, she is very innovative, the answer is no, cannot be. Innovation is a collective activity. Some people call it a big brain activity. That does not mean innovation needs huge intelligence. What it means is that no one person has actually got the intelligence to bring uh, innovation to bear. It takes more than one person. So if you can't get a big brain in one person through some superhuman person, then you add a load of people together. And that's really the, the analogy of the big brain. It's big brain because it needs more than one brain. And as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, innovation only flourishes then in the right environment. So, so far that's enough on, on perhaps um, what it is. It's, it's to get it going, it's a lot about generating ideas. So you, it's in, in terms of an innovation process, you first got to generate the ideas. Well, first you need the need, the problem, if you like, mentioned that. And then you've got to generate ideas about its possible solution, evaluate those ideas, select the ideas, perhaps pilot some, reject others, and ultimately adopt the ideas. It's the adoption then of those ideas that give you the innovation. Let me just tell you then a little bit about a little bit of a story um, about an example of innovation. Now, it's it's to do with the the clients in the end of this was the French fire brigades. Um, I don't want to make it sound as though innovation is something that is always associated with huge change and huge things. Uh, I think in one of the emails we mentioned um, a sum of a sales value of about 35 million pounds. And yes, that was what resulted ultimately from this particular innovation. However, innovation can occur uh, at, at all levels. All we're looking for is a discernible step. We'll come back to that in a moment. But let's take this far French fire brigades and a little story just to illustrate. The French fire brigades, um, they're obviously organized pretty much like ours. And they let it be known that they were in need of replacement command and control system. Um, now, the point about command and control is just a, if you like, a computer dispatch system for controlling the fire and rescue resources. And the French also, Fire Brigade also runs the emergency ambulance service. So it's for dispatching, it's for controlling. Each system typically selling, we'll put a figure on it, of about a million pounds. But again, I really emphasize it's not important, this business, the size, this financial size, it can be any level. And we knew that there were going to be invitations to tender 
in the future for this these systems. So there's a very clear need, and that, I think that's important in driving innovation. There has to be a need. Now, the French French sales guys contact, contacted their product manager, a fellow called Charlie Ginego, um, and for one reason or another, which won't go into, he, called, he talked to me, and we formed an ad hoc team of two people um, to, to just really kicking ideas around at, at this point. Now, we knew from an invest, initial investigation that the command and control system that we'd, we were likely to be selling to them was not going to be compliant. It was close, but it wasn't compliant. It wouldn't win the business. And there's no money available to work on this unique French solution and no intention to develop a solution. Basically, the market, if you did the market analysis, it wouldn't fly. There was, uh, It would take too much to do a mainstream development for it. So Charlie Genigo and I toured the French fire brigades and learned the requirements. So we effectively became expert in the need. And that's a very, very important point we've come to, is steeped in the technology, steeped in the business uh, in order to, to innovate. We convinced the development manager, a fellow called Steve Borrell, that this was business worth going for. And so we'd got a team of three, if you like. The three of us then developed a solution. It was a workaround. It was not a mainstream development. All three of us were steeped in what was possible. We were expert. We were immersed in the domain, and we were able to explore those options. Now, the three of us had day jobs, but the important point, again, we, we had spare effort. We could take time out to do this. We were not uh, 37 hours a week full on other things, and therefore there was no time available. We solicited the help of the systems factory manager, a called John Lange, and he usefully had a slush fund that we could use to develop a proof of con a concept. And we were now therefore able to take a risk and launch the solution into the development process. It was in a pre-production process. We didn't have to do anything properly, if you like. Um, it was all highly irregular. It was all done through the back door, as I say, through a slush fund. Um, and it was a workaround. It was not a mainstream development. Um, but we got a prototype going. We developed a computer card to do the job, uh, built the concept demonstrator, demonstrated to the French fire brigades, and got put on the tender list. The, the rest is downhill at that point, because once we'd got a solution, uh, everyone else sat up and said, aha, this is clearly business we can win. That bid team was put together in Paris, and uh, the result was £35 million pounds of sales. So the point about that really is to try and look at little threads in there that gave us this innovation. Let me just look at that. It was driven fundamentally by a need. That was the important point, and that is always the important point in innovation. Somebody has to be scrabbling to, 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 to solve a problem for innovation to really fly. Um, there has to be some identifiable tasks. You don't sit around and say, hey, let's innovate. It's, it, yes, it comes from ideas, but there has to be some identifiable task. There has to be a pull. You can't push innovation. It, you can't drive it. You have to have people pulling it. Um, time to explore options, able to take risks. There has to be a little bit of time pressure because in that French fire brigade thing, if it wasn't done quickly, then the business disappeared and the, the whole thing was for nothing. There has to be a bit of spare effort to be able to go off-piste, uh, to, to, to look at options. And you have to have people working together who are knowledgeable in the business. You have to be immersed in the domain. You can't have people who don't know about the subject innovating. It won't work. They don't have the knowledge to be able to do that. And ultimately... It's enabled by processes within the company. Yes, in that particular example I gave you, the processes, we bucked the processes. And that's so characteristic of innovation that it happens almost despite the mainstream processes. But if it wasn't for the mainstream processes, we could never actually have done that. And so that it is always enabled by process. So that's, uh, that's enough on, on that. Quick one on culture then. What is culture? Culture is very, very simple and straightforward. It is how we do things around here. It's the, all the unwritten rules, the norms that cause 
things to be done in a particular way. Um, and I think you probably see the link immediately because if culture is wrong, all that stuff that I talked about with the French fire brigade and the, the needs of, of innovation, in fact, will not happen. Simply, if, if, the, if the way we do things around here, the norms, um, go against what's trying to, what we're trying to do. So the question then is, how do we secure culture? How do we describe culture and how do we ultimately change it? Culture is a lot about the summation of all the attitudes, beliefs, values and preferences of the people working in the organization. We describe culture classically by using some kind of model. Now, I've got one here. This one's the one, uh, it's a development of the model from Hofstede. Hofstede did a lot of work in, in, in uh, national culture. This is a development of the Hofstede model. And it has six attributes. So you see the six lines there. Um, focus, drive, uh, management style, the strict or easygoing, um, focus, openness, and uh, orientation. I'll take you through just quickly through those. And I'll reflect on the French fire and you'll see then what I mean by innovation climate. First of all, if you are self-focused, if ultimately you are driven because you are given, um, let's say, bonus, a bonus, you're given a commission and you are told if you perform at that, then you will get your, permit, your commission. And you become very self-focused. The only thing that matters in life is you and your bonus. Whereas the organization focus demands, and you'll see by the yellow blob that that's a yellow uh, square, that that's where we want it for innovation. We want an organizational focus. Likewise, we want things to be driven by the customer, driven by the client, externally driven. If you're driven purely by process inside the organization, and we've got to be careful there because we can have internal customers as well. So let's not say it has to be an external customer, but an internal customer. We don't want to be particularly internally driven. In other words, we want to be very customer aware. Management style, if we're too strict, then we won't innovate. No one will break the rules. And if we're too easygoing, then nothing ever gets done. So it needs to be towards the easygoing Mm, but not certainly not too strict. Uh, the focus, we certainly don't want to focus inside the organization to focus on. We, we need people to be being, being very professional, being driving to get results. Open and secretive, clearly, if, if you don't know the status of the organization, if you have no information on the way the organization works because it's very secretive, then likewise, uh, you, you will not understand, therefore you will not actually go outside of the, the norms. And of course, you need to be very employee oriented, investing in, in developments. People need to, to feel that they are loved in the organization because if it's all about getting work output, if you're a coffee house pulling coffees, if all it's about is pulling those coffees, then you will not innovate. It needs to reflect on the people and, and be told almost, well, you have to, you have to create this amount of business and if that involves pulling coffees, that's good too. So that gives you an idea there about the sort of climate. And I've used one particular model there. There are one, two others, um, one or two others that, uh, that can be used. Uh, things like, for example, uh, the Denison model, which allows you to describe the innovation that you've got and therefore describe the innovation that you would like. Assessing innovation then is a lot about describing it. It sounds rather woolly, but what you've got to do is describe the innovation. Um, uh, sorry, describe the, the culture in order to assess the innovation that might result from that culture. But assessing, innova assessing innovation is literally about the difference. It's about the step that you will see. Um, so the fundamental question is, are we doing something different from that which we did yesterday? as a result of this thing we're saying, there is innovation. Are we doing something differently? Are we doing achieving more? Are we getting more sales? Are we increasing employee uh, um, well, well-being? Are we, etc. All the things that we'd like to do as outcomes from the innovation, is there a step there? And the very common um, way of talking about innovation is the innovation step. 
so we see a difference. We can look at it, and in the case of the French fire brigades, of course, we could look at it and see we are now able to bid. And of course, then ultimately we could see the effect on on turnover. We won that one. We won Hot Course, Alps, Alp uh, Maritime, blah blah blah, uh, all of the those, and we could see those results. So we could see the outcome of the innovation. We could see the the uh, a more local outcome, of course, in the fact that we actually had a solution that was dem demonstrable. Um, so adding the two together, the culture and innovation. We're really talking about how to get the right culture um, and remembering that culture is the way we do things around here. So it's kind of simple, if you like, at least if we abstract. Talking about culture is what's the culture today? What culture do you need tomorrow to foster innovation? And what interventions are you going to put in place to make the change? It could be, for example, I'd be quite uh, give you a clear example if everyone's paid bonuses today and you have a culture of uh, driving people to be very individual scrap the bonuses that's a, that's an intervention okay lots of things to be done considering that we won't go into the detail but that's the kind of thing what are you going to intervene in in employees lives in order to make the change and then of course how are you going to assess what assessments you're going to make to, de to determine if um, each intervention works, which is, of course, one of the issues. So, in summary, number one, knowledgeable people allowed to take risks. Number two, working in the right culture. Number three, there's got to be this need, and I've used the phrase there, scrambling to solve a problem. Um, that's the kind of, that's why you, everyone feels that innovation is a sort of feverish activity. Um, it's got to be involving ideas. You can't have prima donnas. You can't have the boss saying, this is the way we do it. I'm going to innovate. I'm going to say we're innovating and my ideas are prime. Forget it. That is not innovation. It's stemming from people working together and it's taking ideas out of other disciplines. It might be something totally different that you think might work. And that's not good. However, there we are. Instantly responded. Um, and ultimately it's evolution it's trying to take things in small steps and the french fire brigade we didn't completely reinvent the wheel we just invented one card that gave us a workaround so there we are innovation and culture the link between the two we need the right culture in order to foster innovation so back to sue